Welcome to Accelerate OC, the only show focused on the people leading innovation in Orange County. Join our host, Carrie Ransom, in his conversations with the trendsetters, entrepreneurs, investors, and leaders here, because it's time to Accelerate OC. Good morning. Welcome to Accelerate OC. I'm Carrie Ransom. And thanks always to our engineer, Paul, for making me and my guests always sound so good. Today's episode is sponsored by OC4 Venture Studio, which is a new tech startup company building platform and community that's emerging here in Orange County. If you are looking for help with your startup, uh, you're looking for opportunities to work with or support some of the most exciting next generation of, of high growth companies here, or you just want to be part of this community, finding your tribe, go to OC4V.com to learn more. I am really happy. I finally was able to corral my friend Matt Hayden to join me here on Accelerate OC today. And before we get to hear from Matt and his amazing entrepreneurial journey, uh, and I'm sure we will talk about several investment stories as well, let me tell you a little bit about Matt. He has spent uh, the first 20 years of his career building two investor relations firms, uh, the last of which he sold back in 2012 to MZ Group, which is the largest independent investor relations firm uh, in the globe that's based in Brazil. And Matt's been in this industry for a long time. And I think as we've talked about a number of startups and investment opportunities, this background I think is just so valuable because he has a great perspective that runs the gamut of how investors think, um, he is a great storyteller, as, as you will see, and so he really understands the importance of positioning and story. And then he also has a great perspective on how markets work. And so we may even delve today into some of the current thrash that we're seeing in the, in the public markets and how uh, he no doubt has perspective on how that affects investor psychology. He's also the founder and owner of Security Investments, which is a multi-strategy family office that's based here in Orange County. And they really put their emphasis on socially responsible or what's referred to as impact businesses and founders that have strong alignment to both doing well, which is really winning, and doing good in the world. And he's also just an amazingly generous guy with his time, his money, and relationship. And I've greatly enjoyed getting to know him uh, over the last couple of years. And for the last several years, Matt also hosts a regular dinner series that is an event that brings together investors and exciting companies. And we'll talk about the, the uh, big ideas dinners and the impact that they're having uh, here in the region as well today. And finally, he's really a kindred spirit with me in that we both are big cheerleaders, as many of my listeners know, for Orange County. And really thinking differently and toward the future about how we need to embrace new ideas for our, our economy, for how we come together as a community, and how we can inspire more folks to really invest their time in energy and, and money here in our community. And so I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about around that today as well. Matt, it's super awesome that you're here. Thanks for joining me on Accelerate OC. Hey, Kerry, thanks. Um, and the feeling's mutual. So I really appreciate you having me on the show. Um, it's great to be here and, and we're certainly not shy uh, about the fact that we're big fans of you and what you're doing. Oh, I appreciate it. Well, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's start with this idea that, you know, you've been around, even when you were doing investor relations, you've been around these fast growing younger companies for a long time. What was it that got you first excited about this notion of, of breakthrough ideas or, or really emerging companies? Yeah, so this probably goes back to uh, maybe 1996, 1997. And um, one company that uh, we did invest relations work for and also I invested in was a Philadelphia-based company called eResearch Technology. Mm. And they had figured out a way to uh, do automated ECGs for clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And so there was a big tailwind in terms of being able to streamline that process, helping clinical trials to, to get through quicker and, and also keep the safety profile in line. So that ended up being a big winner. It was probably a 30x return. Mm. And, uh, you good know, place to start. It was, <laughs> that was a good place to be. Uh, 
actually I was able to get each family member to own stock during that kind of three year run. So it was my one sister called me. She goes, Matt, like, I feel like I hit the lottery. And I said, well, you know, that's kind of what you did. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think that that was the first time that I just was like, wow, there's a bunch of companies that are doing really cool things that you can get involved with and you can make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so that, uh, the, that drive or thrive when you wake up in the morning trying to find the next winner is, uh, is what really keeps me stoked. Yeah. So as you first get exposed, let's say you, you, know, you, you met that company as a, as a perfect example. And as I, I told the audience, this guy's a great storyteller. You, you meet a new company or a new idea today. What is it that gets you to really sort of sit forward and go, okay, I need to pay attention to this one? Well, there's a number of things that I think need to be consistent, but then, you know, investing is kind of like music. Mm. And, you know, it's once you've spent enough time meeting with enough companies and I've done, I've met and worked with hundreds and hundreds of companies, you, you start to be able to get a feel for the management team, their capability, the idea, and equally or most important, the timing, right? And so I think, you know, how unique is it? How much leverage, how much protection? But is timing right? Mm -hmm. Can you actually get customers to want to buy it today, mm -hmm. to scale it, to embrace it, to look at it as, you know, something that's invaluable, uh, which is what you got to do to win. So I think, um, you know, we love businesses with lots of leverage in the model, things that are de-risked, at least from a commercial perspective, where you've proven that there's a market there. Um, and opt optimally, ones that don't need a ridiculous amount of cash mm -hmm. is kind of near and dear to our heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that uh, I think leverage and capital efficiency tend to uh, go hand in hand. I mean, I you know I think we've talked at least a little bit. I grew up in retail, and I, I often tell the story about how as a kid I was cleaning out the stock room or other things, and and seeing at times some of these boxes that had been there for years, and going, "This is our money that's sitting right. here on the floor. Right. This this doesn't seem like the the ideal." scenario who's so, sleeping at the wheel <laughs> and so you know the as i got exposed to the software industry i said this just seems like a way better uh capital efficient way to to build a business definitely yeah. definitely so we talked uh, uh you know in the introduction uh, you're a great storyteller and i find that that is a really important skill particularly in this day and age for entrepreneurs, um, and even in, in business, how, how have you honed that skill? It's really just by doing, you know, I, I think maybe I've always had a good capability for being mm -hmm. a communicator, but you know, when basically that's all I did every single day for 20 plus years, mm -hmm. uh, you get pretty efficient at it. Sure. Uh, either that or you're out of a job. Um, so I think, you know, when it comes to, you know, the point of, the narrative. Mm -hmm. It is so important. It's both an art and a science. Some people have it, some people don't, but a lot of people can get much better at it if you practice and put the time and energy in. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, you know, in terms of being an executive, a leader, a capital raiser, you have to be passionate. You have to be very effective, very purposeful. And that's the only way that I think you're going to have the ability to connect with the constituents that you needed to be successful. Do you think, it, just as a follow-up to that, do you think that that storytelling, that narrative skill is an absolute imperative for a successful CEO? Or do you think um, that, that someone else in the team can, can fill that void? As long as you have somebody on the C-level team that can do it. Um, you know, look, I've seen companies that have been successful without, there's always exceptions. Sure. But let's just talk about the, the rule. Yes. You need somebody on the team who is the designated, you know, communicator. Yes. The, the public face, the shareholder connection, um, and the ability to, to work with PR and do all the things that you mm -hmm. need to do to make sure uh, you're as prolific as, as possible. I, I totally agree, of course. I've kind of teed that one up. It's funny. I was even just reading an article this morning. I was talking about what attracts. It was like a thousand entrepreneurs that had responded to the survey and it was you know what is the the primary thing attracting people to your startup and equity is what many people on the surface maybe believe it's going to be and it wasn't even in the top eight or nine items it was things around the story and the impact and the people that you're going to work with and so so much of that goes to 
narrative and storytelling and, and connecting to people's, not just their head, but to their hearts. And I think that's, that to me is the power of, of what well put really good capability in that area yeah. can do. So as we talk to a lot of founders, you and I both meet a lot of people and I've talked about this on, on the show a lot. Many founders believe I just need money and I've got it all figured out. So just find me that capital and, and everything will, will be great. How, how do you think we can better educate founders about the importance of uh, what else is needed beyond capital? I guess I'll, I'll put it at that. And, and what, how to really identify what's needed in their business to make it successful. Running, running and gunning, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the first thing that I really try to do is appreciate how precious time is. Mm -hmm. And when you get on the backside of life, <laughs> you really, or the back nine, you really start to appreciate that those we're not there yet. We, yeah. we may we may have life expectancy of a couple hundred years that if, is, if innovation keeps that, that keeps is going. true. Let's so be optimistic. I'm sorry, fifties the new twenty. <laughs> That's right. I, I like That's that right. thinking. But I think first and foremost, you need to connect and spend time with entrepreneurs that can get it. Yes. Because Lord knows I've spent enough time with those that don't. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing worse than giving a bunch of great information, having it completely avoided yes. and then having a disaster at the end. And, and so those, those are terrible movies, Amen. right? Yes. That, that we all get to see. Um, but I think, you know, um, something that you and I have talked about in meetings together is staying focused. And so a focus all the way driven down through the team, through the strategy, through exactly. And, and I think what happens is everyone has good intentions and, but good intentions don't get results. Okay. And so you've got a bunch of highly motivated investors that all have another idea for what your product or service can be. Mm -hmm. And you have CEOs that may not want to disappoint their investors. Sure. So they follow up, they spend time, they go down rabbit holes, but they're still not getting and moving the ball forward, right? Mm -hmm. They're basically deluding themselves and, and, and missing precious time and focus. Um, and then you get other CEOs that kind of like sharks. And they just want to take a bite out of everything. And, and I appreciate that, right? Mm -hmm. Being overambitious, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work in the early days. Once you have a big team and you're scaled and you got lots of cash, <clears throat> that's the time to go, you know, do, do that. So I think staying really, really focused, um, you need to be judicious with your capital so that each raise, you can hit the milestones mm -hmm. that you laid out, which are going to incrementally add enough value to get you to the next level. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if you can't do that, life's going to be really, really tough. That's right. Yeah, I, I agree. Like just sort of limping across that finish line, whatever analogy you sort of want to uh, put against it. I, I think, I think that is, um, is a, so true. And, and even orienting founders to this, uh, under promise over deliver, approach is is really hard one of the mantras that folks around oc4 have to hear me talk about a lot is i say twice as long twice as expensive um, two by two I I've, that. yeah i just i've learned <clears throat> in my career that uh you know we we entrepreneurs have that optimism about us and that's why we start yep. because if we actually accounted for two by two we probably wouldn't because we go well, or three by three or three by three or whatever yeah, yeah whatever it yeah, may yeah, be yeah. And so if, if, uh, if I don't at least plan for that or, or figure out how to manage through the, the likelihood that it's going to take twice as long and be twice as expensive, then I'm, I'm risking existential crises totally. or, or risk, risking death that may, may not be, un, uh, you know, completely necessary. So, um, finding that ability to have balance or somebody to hold you accountable to those things I think is, is really key. To your point, you, you need to be optimistic every day, but you have to be grounded. Yes. And so that's why a team that complements mm -hmm. itself, right? That's right. With the, with the person that is, you know, the glasses half full, the glasses yes. half empty, come mm -hmm. together. That's right. Yeah. And it's, it certainly is a team sport. So, so many businesses that you meet and that I meet, Matt, th they maybe should exist in the world, but they don't have that venture growth potential. They're not really a venture capital type business. And I don't know that that's talked about enough in, in, I feel like the PR machine that's out there, you know, everybody wants venture capital is almost like a badge on their sleeve that 
they've they've gotten it and yet it's really expensive money it's often there's a lot of strings there's there's challenges and in most cases even when you get it you end up disappointing your investors they don't provide that 30x return like you yeah. uh, suggested earlier and you know as i tell many i'm looking at you saying can you get me 100x mm -hmm. because that's what i'm at least contemplating if there's a shot at it yep. so how do, how do you think we can better either i think there's maybe two questions here one is how do we better educate entrepreneurs to understand the realities of that and then the second is how do we find the appropriate capital sources because it seems like there's some pretty significant gaps in the capital stack to even fund some businesses that maybe should exist and could be a perfectly good solid business but aren't ever going to achieve that kind of return well it's funny you mention that because oftentimes when you look at our portfolio uh people will say you know you'll see some names in there that are widely venture owned mm -hmm. and, and known etc mm -hmm. but then you'll see lots of names where you'll look at them and you'll kind of say okay so what's the story there who's in it who's in the name and so a lot of times i say we're the non-vc vc, VC. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's because we try to find companies that, again, can scale quickly, don't need gobs of cash, mm -hmm. and can then use cash flow to, to reinvest into the business. So I think VC, right, is you've got this huge spread between seed funds all the way to late stage mm -hmm. uh, and everything in between. And then you've got corporate investors, corporate VC. Mm -hmm. And then you just have, let's call it smart industry experts. Um, and I'll give you one example because we just invested in a company called ExoMed, uh, which is a med device company based in Elisa Viejo. And uh, they're well on their way to success, commercialized um, with a new tool that doctors use uh, to go into broken hands. Hmm. And they allow them to heal exponentially faster. They can have someone back to work in a few days wow. versus a few months. But they went out, they tried to do some VCs and it was always kind of the same roadblocks. They ended up raising 80% of the money from surgeons. Hmm. So I think when you've got something that's special mm -hmm. and you can prove that out, you should look at the, the, the kind of path of least resistance. Who can understand the story the mm -hmm. best? Who's willing to write the check? And who can you align with? In that particular case, they're getting business out of it because mm -hmm. these guys are becoming um, cheerleaders sure. for the company and the product, as they should. So I think there's lots of different ways that each company can take. Um, and I get the VC route, if you want to be a billion dollar company and you got that mindset and mm -hmm. you try and find the lead and they back you up and gobs and gobs of cash come in. And, and I get that. And for mm -hmm. certain businesses, that's a good thing. Sure, but it's just so few. It's so few. To your point, there's there's 500 unicorns across the world, 180 in the US. And, and actually, I, thank you for sending over the questions because I'll give you some statistics mm -hmm. that, that I think will be really important. So only 8% of venture backed companies are successful. And the odds of you coming up with an idea, taking it to Andres and Horowitz and being successful with funding is one in 2000. So mm -hmm. to get someone to back you, that's a named VC, and then mm -hmm. to become an actual successful exit is a one in 2000 chance. Um, so back to the point, how does the rest of the companies you figure out the void that you fill. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to sell early mm -hmm. when things are going good and you're given the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. because when things go bad, guess what? <laughs> Nobody wants you. That's right. And so I think companies fit a really specific point. Some of them are much longer term. Some are much shorter mm -hmm. term. Mm -hmm. The world is changing rapidly. And so I think each company should be very real with where, where they are in kind of the, the place. Yeah. And you've had some successes. I mean, you mentioned the, the one of your first ones, but you've had several that have reached that billion dollar we have. value. What, what do you derive from that to, um, is it, this is a, a rare exception and there may not be great pattern to it, or is it, hmm, there's a formula here yeah, that I see some, some others could potentially learn from and follow. I mean, I think it's a great question. Each one of those companies is actually in a different vertical. Mm -hmm. So um, it was kind of right place, right time. Mm -hmm. And so back to my timing yes. thing, I think that is the most important thing that anybody focus yes. on is 
is the timing right? And then next, try to figure out the best situation to take advantage of that timing. Mm-hmm. Well, we've talked a lot about I mean, some of the ones that you've been the most excited about have had a key partner in it, you know, whether it's a key strategic, like you were just talking about the surgeons or a key larger company that was either distribution or validation or something like that. Um, you know, we, we've got a, some great mid to large size companies here in Orange County that haven't been too invested, certainly not in the local innovation economy, but I would say for many of them, they haven't really been too invested in the, the innovation economy at all. How, how do you suggest we get some of the bigger Orange County companies to embrace the, the startup community a little bit more proactively? Well, um, I, I think examples mm-hmm. and then I think follow through and knocking on the door and yeah. asking. So I think with lots of things, you don't get it unless you unless ask. You ask. Yeah. And, and I'll give you an example. Thanks for, for prompting that in my mind because I just um, – I wanted to talk to you after the show today, give you an update on Illusio. Mm-hmm. So Illusio Imaging is a San Clemente based company, literally based two miles from my house. Um, and they've come up with a way to uh, help a plastic surgeon and the patient or the customer align expectations for outcomes mm-hmm. through a, a very, very detailed 3D visual package. Mm-hmm. Um, and they signed a deal with Mentor, which is Johnson Johnson subsidiary, which is based here in Orange County. And this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mentor owns 50% of the global market for cosmetic surgery implants. That just sounds like your ideal strategic partner. It's very tough to find someone that owns 50% of the market. Of any market, yes. They're going to use this, and and they've actually made it a number one priority, with uh, all of their sales reps to go out to the surgeons. Um, One, it helps effectuate a better outcome. You're Mm -hmm. gonna have happier customers. You're also gonna increase throughput. And for their sake, you're able to lock in a skew with the visualization image. Mm-hmm. So once the surgeon, the patient agree on it, you lock it in, it's going to give them more business. So it's a true win-win, but it's going to allow Illusio to scale very, very meaningfully with very little capital. Mm-hmm. So I am super excited about the deal. I think it is a great showpiece that can be presented to other companies to say, hey, Here's an example of a deal that just happened that's mm-hmm. going really well. Mm-hmm. And I think like anything else, if you, if a company will put their focus and energy into th- something such as can we go find more companies to partner with, to yes. do deals with, good things will happen. I, I totally agree with that. So as you think about that one just for a second, do you think that Mentor could have gotten to the recognition of this need on its own? Or do you think it took a, an enterprise entrepreneur? Because that's... That's often the challenge that I've seen, you know, being on the other side in the corporate from the ivory tower thinking yep. we, we see everything that's going on mm-hmm. in the world. And the reality is you and I both know is it's just not true. Like we all have blind spots. Uh, and so to your point, Elusio had been knocking on their door for about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And so I think it was one of those things where they knew about it. They thought it was really interesting. Mm-hmm. And then whatever switch got flipped, I know that Allergan has been pushing a solution. Mm -hmm. That's the only real other competitor they Mm -hmm. have uh, in the market. And so I think, you know, as soon as they placed an emphasis on it, you then look and here's a company Mm -hmm. that's in pole position that already has a commercialized product that's ready to go. So Mm -hmm. speed to market. So I think it was probably in that particular case, a combination, but back to the point, if you can just help executives expand their horizon with the opportunities that Mm -hmm. are out there, more deals are going to happen. Yeah, totally agree. And and I think that gets also to your point on timing is, uh, you know, it just may not have been the right time for them until until now. Yeah. And so um, as I was told years and years ago, uh, as an entrepreneur, being early is the same as being wrong. And uh, sometimes <laughs> so you just true. have to you have to survive long enough until that those I've, conditions I've got, change. I've got plenty of those. Yes. You know, absolutely. I put the certs right on the wall. <laughs> this is back from paper cert <laughs> yes, days, right? Yes. To remind me of the mistakes I made. Yes, that's a, that's a great way to do it. So great uh, transition too. So let's go uh, under the hood a bit and talk about how you are really affecting some change here and you know where i see the change is bringing awareness to more people of the opportunities here and so you started you know many years ago this best ideas dinner where you're bringing together a great group of 
investors and people interested in learning about some of the newest, biggest ideas in the area and giving companies an opportunity to expose themselves to folks that could be great investors, partners, et cetera. You know, how, you want, you want to share a little bit about that and then how, how you think the Accelerate OC audience could even be helpful to you in that regard. Thanks, Kerry. So I'll, I'll spend a minute just to talk about sure. kind of how I got here to mm -hmm. this point in time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I spent 20 years schlepping around the U.S. and actually about six or seven years going to Asia and mm -hmm. back and forth. And so I got married in 2010 and I kind of said ready for next chapter, which was let me kind of hone in. And we started having kids and, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not getting on planes flying around, sure. thankfully. Yes. Um, and then I started looking around and. You know, we've got five portfolio companies that are within five miles of our house. Mm -hmm. And that's in San Clemente. Sure. Okay. So this is something that you couldn't have done 10 mm -hmm. years ago because it just, unless you were investing in t crazy companies, like, but to find really investable companies. So I feel like my goals kind of really aligned with what's happening in the market today, uh, which is that there is a lot more high quality management teams, investable companies. Uh, folks that either have come out of exits, et cetera, or that are moving here mm -hmm. for a better, better quality life with their family and, and a good place to raise them. So Yeah. Oh, by the way, this is the best place in the world to live for anybody <laughs> who's uh, following along. Yeah. And if, you know, if you don't know that you've been living under a rock, I mean, <laughs> you know, like I, I never, I never will rub it in people's face. And you're talking to someone in New York, you're like, oh, how is it up there? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Switch the conversation really quick. Exactly. It's, it, it's, it's an amazing place. It really is. And, you know, I love to surf. And so like, if I think about all the things that are right in my backyard, you know, it's, it's a real blessing. But, uh, so, so getting into, um, a couple, uh, uh states of what's happening today and something that's really near and dear to your heart mm -hmm. i think that we should cover is the uh the qsbs and yes. opportunity zone yeah. just briefly mm -hmm. because i've taken a page out of your book you and i have been talking about opportunity zones since that regulation mm -hmm. was filed mm -hmm. and you've been really one of the, the the early movers to step up put in your studio and start to get a fund orchestrated so i just i think for all the real estate for all the other investors that are out there that are trying to say, you know, what should I be doing at this time? You should be taking advantage of this, saving on paying capital gains, and then having the opportunity to build massive wealth and not pay more capital gains. Mm -hmm. And I just, it's like such a gift that the government That's has right. handed us. And I call it the ultimate impact investment. Totally. Because it's designed to go into areas that need it, but it also gives you the, this incredible incentive so you can have the impact and to your point, build the wealth. I, I plan to reinvest this pool of capital over and over and over yep. as long as I can into this community. And I think that's, that's what we need to get people to understand is that, you know, in the pie, if there's a pie that the team is getting a part, I, as the investor, I'm getting the part and the government's getting its part, they're leaving their piece of the pie in. And so to me, that, that is the huge opportunity to create impact in a, in a big way. And, and to your point, like if I think about, you know, real estate investing and venture investing couldn't be more opposite, yes. right? In terms of every single aspect of it. However, real estate investors are very tax efficient investors. Yes. And this is a very tax efficient way right. to allow your dollars to go much further in venture. So you could take, you know, the same amount of money that you would invest after tax before paying taxes, et cetera, mm -hmm. and get a much bigger position in a diversified set of companies That's where right. the likelihood of success will be significantly better. And then also the, the qualified small business stock. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the reason that I really started to get meaningfully into venture seven or eight years ago is because of this beautiful opportunity again on the tax side. Mm -hmm. And we've now had three exits where we have benefited from QSBS because we have paid no taxes hmm. on very big gains. We've got another two in tow right now that I think will happen over the next two years. And I mean, we're talking about, you know, seven digit figures mm -hmm. of no taxes. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are things that should be very, very high on the priority scale. And where I talk to one in a hundred that know about it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and if you think about it, um, the difference too, which I think people don't understand is if you, if you take the equivalent, like a 1031 exchange that real estate investors know, well, that is just a continual kick the can, 
right? You're deferring, you're deferring. In some cases, I, I've talked to people who are, have been doing 1031 exchanges through generations wow. where they they just yeah. keep keep kicking. And these are permanent tax elimination opportunities, right? I put, you know, just to, to give a little bit, we haven't talked about this too deeply on the show, so I appreciate you bringing it up. If I put a million dollars into a, a company to buy equity in that company and I hold it for five years, they have an exit, I can get up to 10 times my gain tax-free. That is huge, as you, as you were just alluding to. That is a huge savings and, and then you can go and do something else with and it. go reinvest it. That's yeah. right. And, and I think that's so powerful. And then if you think about uh, venture investment, I mean, what, what really got me thinking about this is I started to look at my own life and I said, okay, what are the points at which I've had the biggest tax bills? And it's been when I've had a huge capital gain from a, a venture that I've been involved with or invested in in some way. And so I said, so you're telling me that most of these companies that I've been involved with anyway, take a long time. They take certainly more than a couple of years in almost every case. So if most of these take years anyway, and I'm, I'm able to not uh, pay my tax and immediately on the way in by deferring that, rolling over the capital gain that I want to defer and invest that in an area that needs it into businesses that are really compelling. And then I operate those businesses as we should in an appropriate growth way. And then have a huge exit. Let's say it's a 30x mm -hmm. or a 100x return, and I have no tax on that. Dream the dream. That is unbelievable. And that is, as I said, why I consider it the ultimate impact yep. investment. Well, it's in I, incredible. I'm glad you're beating the drum because it's it's important. It's important that people actually take it seriously and capitalize on it. That's so, right. And this know. is an area where we have, I mean, as, as I've been saying for years, there is no shortage of capital in this area yep. there is a lack of experience there's a lack of comfort with mm -hmm. this area i mean I, people look at me and I, I know i can see by the look in their eye that they think i'm a vegas gambler when it comes to <laughs> your shirt, how i think your about shirt tells a different story yeah exactly <laughs> and i i actually don't I, I i don't view myself that at all i i view myself as actually a very good risk manager and that's why we set up the studio the way we did with this idea of we're going to put way better people into these companies in the early stages than they could otherwise probably get on their own. Yep. And that is a risk management. Totally. Uh, totally. That's, and, that's, that's, and that's why I think your your likelihood for success is going to be much greater much than a normal passive VC. That's right. And that's a great place to have dollars allocated. That's right. You know? That's right. So – on the uh, back to the the dinners that you've you've been doing because I think you know through that you've also built a great community, and part of what you know I think you and I both are on the, on this mission to really connect the Orange County community in a more meaningful way. So you know you're you're a great storyteller. What are some good stories that have come out of of the uh, dinners over the years? Well, the the dinners actually go back to when I was in IR. Mm -hmm. And so I'd be in New York on a road show and I'd put together 10 guys and everybody would bring in their best ideas. Uh, and we'd sit around a table mm -hmm. and have a nice meal and talk mm -hmm. about it. Kind of like the show Billions. They sure. did their best ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then, you know, it was probably about four years ago and we got this really nice clubhouse on the ocean in our neighborhood. And I was just like, you know, people have birthdays and they're doing – you know, weddings and stuff, mm -hmm. which is great. And we, sure. we've done those there as well. Mm -hmm. But I said, why don't I kind of get the best ideas going again, use this great setting, mm -hmm. get people together, mm -hmm. some camaraderie, and then hear about investment opportunities. So that's what I did. Um, you know, and it kind of started off small, probably 20, 30, 40 people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people were really digging it. And, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, Matt, like, these are you know, some great companies you're mm -hmm. having there. I love the people on meetings. Mm -hmm. Like, this is really, really good. And, then I got an opportunity. So Stance is located mm -hmm. uh, there. Jeff Curl is actually a very well, a very successful VC investor. He's the co-founder of Stance, and he just took a position, the GP at Pelion Ventures. Mm -hmm. So we now have a VC based in San Clemente. So that's the first that's time. Um, yeah. But he let me use their facility. So that's a really beautiful auditorium where you can have 100 plus people. So I was able to kind of expand it up and invite more. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did it uh, the last event at Giga Savvy. So 
Uh, we've had a lot of companies, um, a number of companies which have, you know, gotten their raises done or on to next raises. Um, I'm trying to think back to, you know, if we've had any companies that have yet been taken out. But uh, I think a couple that are on their way maybe this mm -hmm. year. Um, and each event, which is done quarterly, is a different theme. So the last one that we did was on oncology. There was a lot of reasons that it kind of became front row and center. My sister got breast cancer last year. We've had a number of other mm -hmm. family friends that have gone through um, uh, their trials and tribulations on the cancer side. And let's face it, I mean, it's super mm -hmm. prolific. So mm -hmm. we had like the Samueli Family mm -hmm. Foundation. We had a number of Orange County-based companies, both on, on the therapeutic side and the digital tech side for oncology management. Mm -hmm. So it was really a great, you know, I, I think that was a, um, a beautiful event where everyone had a takeaway. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I do put these actually on the C Purity website. So if you go to C, as in the ocean, purity.us, and then go over to the Best Ideas Dinner, you can see the last three events. So we always mm -hmm. video all the presentations, and you can get a feeling for what we do. Um, in addition, if you would like to participate in future events, send me a note. I kind of keep a threshold of if you've got $5 million in investable capital just to make it makes sense because if you're going to do venture you, mm -hmm. you really need to have a big enough portfolio so you can mm -hmm. you know you can be properly diversified mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um would love to share uh, that that uh that experience with you if you're interested that's great well and i think it just adds to another community I mean, we have um you and i've talked a lot about the different groups here whether it's uh tech coast angels i actually had the the president of tech coast angels on here recently uh whether it's the the cove and the cove fund that they've put together there you've got you know, now Jeff with uh, with Pelion, you've got a few other venture firms here. Uh, we have some presence. Yep. Um, there still are some gaps for sure. Um, and we've got a lot of work to do on the, the company side. So let's turn for a second to talking about entrepreneurs. And we talked a little bit earlier about how, you know, many entrepreneurs are not really set up to properly take in venture capital. But let's Let's talk about big ideas and ones that that should start here and should grow here. What do you think we as a community can do to better support those big idea entrepreneurs here in Orange County? So I think if you kind of look at the ecosystem, back to your point, and we're actually LPs in uh, Okapi mm -hmm. uh, and also the Code Fund, mm -hmm. and I think both are, are great. You know, the Code Fund's interesting because it's got this 99-person mm -hmm. limited mm -hmm. uh, LP base with a lot of execs and people that built companies mm -hmm. and, and all that. Um, and so I think, uh, to your point, you've also got a couple of law firms that are that are active, you know, Stradling and Gunderson. Mm -hmm. um, but the the ability to kind of structure and streamline from the early stage through the point where you then open it up to lots mm -hmm. and lots of investors. So let's call it through Series A. Yep. So pre-seed through Series A is the most critical component yes. of the company's life. Mm -hmm. um, and if everybody kind of does something, mm -hmm. if everyone took an opportunity to make a few calls or a few introductions or just thought a little bit more about a company that they had an understanding of or an ability to influence, mm -hmm. it would make a huge difference. I almost think about it like I was thinking about the other day when, or yesterday when I was going through the questions that, that, that we were going to prepare for this, you know, um, so we've got the coronavirus and we're not going to mm -hmm. get on that, but you know, now people are just kind of bumping fist and, and everyone's being a little more thoughtful, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In terms of what they touch, how they wash their hands, that in and of itself is actually going to do a tremendous amount to curtail the, uh, you know, how this spreads. Mm -hmm. So, so back to, if you're just a little more thoughtful and there's some people like mm -hmm. you and, and, and other folks in the ecosystem that are, you know, just go out of their way to do as much as they can for as many companies. You are one of those for sure. Well, <laughs> uh, I try every day. I do, I do things every day for people gratis. Yes. Um, and it's where I know that I can, I, I have some ability to positively impact them. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's one of the things that is rewarding uh, about what I do Absolutely. and that I love. And I think that if other people do that, they will be, get rewarded. They yes. will go, wow, that really feels good. Then guess what? Other people want to support you. So it's this kind of self-fulfilling prophecy mm -hmm. of motion. Yes. Motion in the right direction for all the right reasons. That's right. Well, and, and the, what I keep 
thinking about too. I mean, as as we've talked about, you know, part of why we started OC4 was really to try to affect change in the amount of supply. Because my my general view after being here for over 15 years is we're not seeing a meaningful increase in the number of technology companies that are starting and reaching pre-seed to seed to series A. And that tends to get validated when I talk to people down the line that have had to go outside the area. They have to expand their aperture because they say, I don't see enough supply here. And so we need people at every stage, but to your point on doing a little bit, ideally we get people even at those later stages that say, okay, I, I should put a little bit in at the early stage, whether it's to, to make sure I get a look at it later or just to, to ensure that that supply is actually there. And, and because just, it's easy to yeah. just wait. It's yeah. easy to wait and say, totally. hey, I'll wait till series B, I'll wait till yeah. even series A, but if nothing ever rises to that level, then you're going to, you could be waiting a long time. And, and I think that that's where we need to get the right, the, the right supply demand mix, uh, put together here to, to your point. Uh, so several years ago, I want to say it's about three and a half years ago, we invested in next cube, which is mm -hmm. an incubator accelerator. Mm -hmm. And actually Daniel haters, uh, heads up the, uh, digital healthcare, uh, vertical, which he's been doing very well with. So he's based in La Jolla. I'm actually working to get um, them to open an office here in OC, mm -hmm. which will have a primary focus on property technology, which is- Which absolutely should be something we do here. Which is great yes. for here, but it will also get them into the mix more here. And so mm -hmm. back to support mechanisms that can take good entrepreneurs and good ideas they really need it at the beginning because mm -hmm. you've got to make the right decision the first time, right? Time and capital are mm -hmm. so precious. So, mm -hmm. so I think having, you know, next cube, you know, we, we do have kind of a void of accelerators yes. and incubators here. And so if we can just pull in a few other folks, you know, like you got That's Mucker right. Capital, you've got science up in LA. I mean, mm -hmm. these guys have built really yes. successful machines. And while you do have more people in LA, there's plenty of people here. That's right. We just need, that that foundation in place that's right yeah could not agree more and uh as i've told many many people when it comes to you know what we're doing at oc4 I say, I'll, I'll open source this whole plan i we we're not the answer we're an answer which 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 i and love and we though. need you yeah. know we need 10 of these here throughout throughout the county yeah. to really just elevate the game of of everyone so yeah. whether that's taking somebody out of a company here who's ready to go be an entrepreneur or that bright-eyed yeah. bushy-tailed recent graduate from Chapman or UC Irvine who has a mission to go on, um, they, they need help. Yep. This is, you know, you mentioned earlier, it's a team sport. That's you it. You need the, the counterbalance and, and success has many fathers. That's right. That was something a really smart mentor of mine taught me a long time ago. And in order to be successful, you need a lot of people along that journey. And, uh, you know, but that's also, it's kind of fun, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's way more fun to do way it as a fun. team. It's way more fun to do it. I mean, doing it by yourself, you, you look around and who are you, who are you going to share? You're it just with? another one of those guys. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So Matt, uh, I'm getting the time sign here from Paul, which, uh, always disappoints me because I think we could sit here for, for hours, <laughs> but, uh, we will once we turn it off. That's right. That's right. So final, uh, final lap. One of the things I always ask people to, to really impart is, you know, you've shared a lot of thoughts, a lot of great wisdom today, but you know, what's a, what sort of a final either lesson or piece of wisdom that you'd love to share with this growing group of entrepreneurs that we're trying to inspire here in Orange County? Uh, so first I'll start with, and this is non-business, but health is wealth. Mm. And so, you know, I love to surf. I surf with all these pros down at Trestles and it keeps me so invigorated mm -hmm. And it keeps me so clear and on my game. And I just think if everybody stayed a little healthier, mm -hmm. they would be much more productive. They would be, you know, they'd be in a much better place. So um, that's, a, that's a great one. You know, so, I mean, I, I try to preach that and I yes. live it. Uh, so, so getting into taking a chance and going for it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be successful, you got to take chances. I don't care what, whether you're playing sports, I don't care what you're doing in this world, mm -hmm. you have to have a dream and then you have to have a plan and you've gotta go for it. Don't be afraid to ask for help. That's mm -hmm. back to the thing, like you don't get something, you know, people can't read your mind. 
Um, I tell people that all so the time. Powerful. I go, hey, like I'm like the straight, most straight up guy you'll meet, but I can't. I don't know what's going on in there. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta mm-hmm. let me in. Let me know. Mm-hmm. Uh, dig your feet in. Get committed to this community. It will, it will reward you greatly. Um, looking to hire great talent coming out of our mm-hmm. school systems. That you know, it's a shame we get really smart people here and they're all leaving. So get them hired. Get them in the mix. Build a company. Leave a legacy. Um, mm, and, that's and, amazing. And and don't be stubborn, you know, because you got to be motivated, but you got to be grounded. And there's nothing worse than a company that raises too much money and fails because the CEO was super stubborn and was either a control freak or a knowledgeable know-it-all or any of those mm-hmm. cliches that are all mm-hmm. true. Um, be responsible. Mm. So such great wisdom in there, Matt. Thank you so much for for that. Thank you for the friendship and for the conversation today and all the incredible work you're doing here in the community with investors and inspiring them with the companies that you support and all the people that you are, uh, you know, in the background. I know you, you do so much for so many here in uh, this community leading by example, and you are well more than doing your part to accelerate OC. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Thanks very much. You've just listened to Accelerate OC. Join our live recordings every Tuesday morning at accelerateoc.com or listen, like, and share anytime from your favorite podcast spot. Let's accelerate OC together.